since we don't have interaction, we can move on to step three. In step three, we ask, does each of the factors have an impact on our dependent variable completion time in this case? And so we look at separate rows in these analysis of variance tables. First, let's look at the motivation row. In the motivation row, we have a p-value of 0 0.0059, much smaller than our 0 0.05 threshold. So we conclude that motivation has an effect on completion time. Next, we look at the training method row. And in the training method row, we see the same thing. A p-value of 0 0.0179 is smaller than our threshold of 0 0.05. So we reject our null hypothesis, which was that training method didn't have an effect on completion time, in favour of the alternative, which is that training method does have an impact on completion time. Our final thing to do now is to have a look at, well, how do these things matter? That is, what can we say about the different levels of motivation and training method and the effect that these have on completion time? So we'll look first at motivation. We're looking at the, the comparisons, uh, the, these post hoc comparisons for uh, motivation. We've got the p-value here of 0 0.0059. That is exactly the same p-value that we had up here. And this is no surprise, because if we've determined that motivation has an effect, well, there's only two levels for motivation. So our certainty about how those two levels differ is exactly what we're looking at here. This p-value tells us that there is a significant difference in, in, tra in uh, um, completion time between the high and low levels of motivation, and this is the p-value for that test. We can look at the means here, 28 uh, hours, I think it was, for completion, an average completion time for the low motivation group, 14 and a half hours for the high motivation group. So we'd say that there's significantly longer completion times for the low motivation group than the high motivation group. We can move down now to the training method comparison. For the training method comparison, let's take a look at the means. We have an average of 29 and 3 quarter hours for the people on the computer-based uh, method, 20 and a half hours for the self-study group, and 13 and a half hours for the classroom group. The biggest difference here is between the classroom and computer-based group, right? 29 and 3 quarter hours versus 13 and a half hours. That's the comparison of groups 1 and 2. This is the p-value for comparing groups 1 and 2. It's 0.015. That's smaller than 0.05. So we say there is a significant difference in completion time between the classroom and computer-based groups. But looking at the p-values for the comparisons of group 2 and 3, sorry, that's group 1 and 3, is classroom and self-study. And group 2 and 3, that is computer-based and self-study, we see that there are not significant differences. These p-values are bigger than the R.05 threshold. So we would say that there is not a not evidence of difference between classroom and self-study or between computer-based and self-study.